The second P of the four P's in marketing place is closely associated with delivering products and services to the consumers. In this video, we're going to talk about the various topics related to place. And separately, you're going to see a lot of optimizations conducted on optimizing various aspects of place. Enjoy. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Marketing Analytics. In this video, we're going to examine the analytics methods applied to the second P of the four P's, place. Most of the issues we discuss here are related to distribution, logistics, and sales force management. The agenda of this class includes first, what is a distribution channel? And then we're going to look at two specific issues that we're going to resolve in Excel. First, where to pick the location of our warehouse. Second, how should a salesperson better allocate efforts to maximize the profit? So first, what is a channel? A channel in marketing is pretty close to the definition of supply chain. The difference is that when we talk about supply chain, we usually focus on the part before the products are made. Like how do you source materials, and how do you ship parts together, and then how you achieve the manufacturing process. In marketing, the channel are more likely to be the components on the front end of product delivery. For example, a manufacturer may use retailers to sell the products to the consumers. And that process from manufacturer to the retailer to the consumers, that is a channel that we refer to in marketing. So the role of a channel is very often to improve the efficiency of product delivery. For example, a web service like Craigslist, or nowadays Facebook's marketplace, they tend to bring buyers and sellers together into the same place. And as a result, the market may be more efficient. And in the old times, we would have farmer's market or we would have flea markets. And all these are what we call intermediaries, the middle member that brings buyer and seller together, and that forms a channel to sell products. So having an intermediary has various advantages besides developing expertise and uh, being the expert of delivering goods efficiently to the consumers. An intermediary also can make a huge difference in terms of market formation. So let's look at two different markets. In the first market, we have five sellers and five buyers. So on the left, S1 to S5 and B1 to B5. On the right, we have the same five sellers and the same five buyers. So in order to form a market, the buyers have to find the sellers. So each buyer has to find each seller. So in the first market, with nothing in between, in order for the sellers to be connected to the buyers, so how many connections do you need to establish for this market to be fully functional? Actually, many of them. So for each buyer to be connected to each seller, with five buyers and five sellers, we need five times five, a total of 25 connections for the market to be fully functional. So when you think about a larger scale market with hundreds of sellers and millions of buyers, the connections needed for the market to be fully functional is huge. However, on the right-hand side market, we have an intermediary member in this channel. So buyers and sellers can go through this intermediary to form the market. Now, how many connections do we need for this market to be fully functional? It will be five connections from the sellers to the intermediary and five connections from the buyers to the intermediary. So a total becomes five plus five only 10 connections. And it makes a big difference, mainly because when we add things up, the total number doesn't increase so drastically comparing to when we multiply things together. 
So as you can see on the right hand side, with an intermediary in this market, this channel is far more efficient and the buyers and sellers can all come to this intermediary to form the market. I'm sure you already have thought about the examples of such intermediaries. In the older times of internet marketing, we had eBay. So without eBay, all the flea markets were highly local and much smaller. With eBay, now we have millions of sellers facing millions of buyers, and they together can trade things in a common marketplace. And not only can physical goods go through an intermediary to form an efficient channel, services can have intermediaries as well. And in the gig economy, we have companies like Uber or Lyft or Airbnb. They are intermediaries that bring the service providers and service buyers together to form an efficient marketplace. So as you can see, channels and in particular intermediaries in the channel can be very crucial for market formation. And of course, companies can sell products through different channels. And the business can sell online, can sell in brick mother store, and a combination of them. So the question often boils down to which channel do you want to sell your products, online, offline? And there are, of course, other options nowadays, such as multi-channel and omni-channel. So the difference between multi-channel and omni-channel is in omni-channel, there is a higher degree of integration between the different channels, for example, online and offline channels. With a lot of retailers, their warehouse for the retail stores are separated from their warehouses for online deliveries. So in that case, they would be more multi-channel rather than omni-channel. So in omni-channel, the online and offline sales, they are more likely to be sharing the same set of warehouses, a higher level of integration. And nowadays, not only conventional retailers all have online channels, there's also the other side that the conventional online retailers, such as Amazon, are bringing up brick and mortar integrations by purchasing stores such as Whole Foods and by opening their own retail stores such as Apple. So it's safe to say that almost everybody is to some extent multi-channel nowadays. When companies use multi-channel to deliver products or services, unavoidably, we may observe what's called a channel conflict. For example, on the left-hand side is a very simple conventional channel. You have a manufacturer, and the manufacturer uses retailers to sell their products to the consumers. So that's a typical channel. And on the other hand, if the manufacturer introduces an online channel into the market by selling directly to the consumers, now we have a multi-channel business with two different channels. And unavoidably, you may have conflicts between the two different channels. For example, if the manufacturer is selling products to the consumers at a lower price points than those products are sold in retail stores, then the retailers are not going to be happy because the manufacturer's direct sales would hit the demand in the retail stores, and then that would lower the efficiency with the retailers. So channel conflict unavoidably would happen when you have multiple channels, and very often the manufacturers and the retailers resolve these conflicts through negotiations and various agreements because the same manufacturer may be selling products through different retailers or different channels. So next, let me give you a brief overview of the Excel examples we're going to go through when we talk about marketing analytics on place. So first, in Excel, we can use Excel's map functions to map out store locations. And by knowing the number of stores in each state, we may be able to tease out what are the competitive landscape between two big retailers across the United States. So we're using mapping to examine the competitive situation. And here's another question, where to put the warehouse? So we all know that Amazon's headquarters is in Seattle, and it clearly it's not very efficient in dispatching products from Seattle to the rest of the country. So Amazon would need to build warehouse. 
the question is where should Amazon build its first warehouse? Secondly, let's say if Amazon has two warehouses, and where should those two warehouses be? And we can actually use Excel Solver to optimize the warehouse locations. By picking out the optimal warehouse location, Amazon would actually be able to minimize the total shipping cost incurred. And also using Solver, we can minimize a salesperson's total travel distance or cost or time based on the itinerary of the salesperson's travel. So for example, if this person is traveling from Boston to all these cities on the map and uh, picking a random route may be fairly inefficient, and instead we can use Solver to find the optimal route to go from Boston and visit all these cities and in the end, we're going to minimize the total travel distance. And the salesperson may be conducting sales calls to multiple doctors. And the question is, when you detail these doctors, which doctor should you detail more? Which should you detail less? And how do you allocate your total sales call efforts? We can use Excel Solver to resolve this problem. And these are the set of questions we are going to resolve using different marketing analytics methods. Thank you, and keep up the good work.